Well, praise God. Good to be with you again this week. God is good all the time. Amen. Before we get started, uh, next week we're going to start on 2 Corinthians. Uh, so today we're going to talk about something else. Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to touch on what happened in South Carolina. Uh, and, you know, the devil wants to separate the body of Christ. Uh, I've seen many news reports talking about this black church. Friend, there's no such thing as a black church. There's the church, and there's only one church, and it's comprised of white, black, brown, yellow, red, all the colors under the rainbow. But we are one body in Christ. So when a part of us is attacked, the whole body of Christ is attacked. That's the way God looks at it, and that's the way you and I should look at it. The devil attacked the body of Christ in South Carolina through a deranged man who I believe was demon-possessed. I believe that young man was demon-possessed. He opened himself up to demons, and that's where that attack came from. And if the devil has his way, he will use that attack to separate the body of Christ. He's not so much interested in America being separated. He wants the church, the body of Christ, to be separated. But I'm here to say right now, Mr. Devil, you will not separate the body of Christ. We are one in Christ. I love my black brothers. I love my white brothers, red brothers, yellow brothers. We are one. We are one. We are one. And devil, you will not separate us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That needed to be said. Amen. Glory to God. When we are one, we're powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can get about doing the Lord's work, which is getting people saved, getting people delivered. Oh, if that young man had been saved, that wouldn't have happened. If he knew Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, those uh, uh, brothers and sisters of mine would be alive right now. Thank God they're walking the streets of glory, but they would be walking around on earth right now. Amen. So the church needs to rise up and be the church. And we need to speak in truth and love, and we need to get people saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Well, before we get started, let's pray. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for Jesus Christ. I thank you for his blood, that it unites me with all different kinds of people. I thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that you anoint me right now to speak what you want to be spoken, to teach what you want taught. And Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you anoint those that are watching or listening. Anoint them to receive a rhema word, a right now word into their lives. And I ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to Mark chapter 5. And if you have a pen, take some notes, pen and paper. Mark chapter 5. This is a great, great story here in the Bible, starting with verse 1. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes, and when he, Jesus, had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. You know, you've heard of people cutting themselves, injuring themselves. It's the devil. It's a demonic power that is driving them to do that. Some are oppressed by a devil. Some are oppressed by demons. Some are possessed by demons. And verse 6, And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he, Jesus, asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we were many. So this 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 young man was demon-possessed by not just one spirit, by many. And in the Greek, 
it seems to indicate that he was uh, possessed by about 6,000 demons. Imagine that, 6,000 demons. Also, uh, also, he begged him earnestly, verse 10, that he would not send him out of the country. Uh, so all the beg demons begged him, verse 12, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Verse 15, then they came to Jesus. I like this. And they saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. <laughs> uh, people, I don't understand, but the world, well, I do understand, the, the world is often afraid when God delivers. Amen. But here is this young man. He was demon-possessed, hurting himself, had to be depressed. But then he had an encounter with the master, with Jesus. And he was changed. He went from having a mind that wanted to hurt himself to being in his right mind. So I want to take a few minutes today and talk to you about overcoming depression. Oh, I know about depression. Till I was about 28 years old, I fought depression. Oh, I know about depression. It is such bondage. It's like walking in quicksand. You can never seem to have joy. You can never have peace. No matter what you try, it's like you're drowning. I know about it. 28 years I've dealt with depression. You can have moments of lightheartedness, but the majority of your life is depression. I know how Robin Williams felt. Because I felt that way many, many times. But thank God for Jesus. He'll deliver you and change you forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Depression is involved. I have a few facts here. Depression is involved in more than two-thirds of the 30,000 suicides that occur in the United States every year. About 9% of American adults from all walks of life suffer from some form of depression. I think it's probably higher than that. Women are 70% more likely than men to experience depression during the course of their lifetime. Studies show that rates of depression for Americans have risen dramatically in the past 50 years. Hosea 4.6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I dare say that there are multitudes upon multitudes of Christians, those that love the Lord, those that believe the Bible, that suffer from depression because they, they're destroyed for lack of knowledge. They don't know what the Word says about them, what the Word says about their mind. Friend, I'm telling you, if you will make a quality decision today, to believe what the Word of God says about you and to begin to speak that Word, Yes, I believe in the Word of Faith message. You read the Word, you believe the Word, and you speak the Word. And you will see depression leave you. Doesn't mean you won't have opportunities, but you will be well equipped to defeat depression. Why? Because the Word of God is more powerful than depression. Amen? Amen. Uh, friend, your lack of knowledge ends today. I'm going to give you the knowledge from the Word of God that will get you over, that will make you victorious over depression. Let me tell you something. Like I said, for 28 years of my life, I battled depression. I, I mean, I, it, it is a terrible feeling. I know exactly what people go through when they're depressed. I had quit going to church for a number of years. I'd visit every now and then in different churches, but I didn't go to church regularly. Not at all. Because I got to a point where I was so depressed that the devil had me convinced that if I went to church, uh, you know, 
I'd be doing that church a disservice. I was too unworthy to go to church. Do you feel that way? Do you feel too unworthy to even pray? Then one day in 1997, it started a few weeks before I had, was at work, and during some downtime, I read a local, or the Houston Chronicle had an article on Pastor John Osteen and his church, Lakewood Church. So I read it, had nothing else to do, always thought he was a phony. Why? What was my, what, what did I base that on? Because he was on TV, that's all. Ignorance, ignorance gone to sea. Didn't know anything about the man or the church, but you know, the devil didn't want me to get there and get delivered. So I was convinced that he was a phony because he was on TV. He was only after money. Well, later I found out that John Osteen never asked for money on TV. <laughs> was I wrong, right? Amen. Anyway, so I read this article, put it away, didn't think much about it. But I was intrigued because it talked about the miracles that were happening at this church. It was a huge article in, in a secular newspaper. Well, I found myself about two or three weeks later, something like that, on a Wednesday night, sitting at home. And all of a sudden, the thought came to me, let's go to Lakewood Church. Well, first of all, Lakewood Church was 28 miles from my house. Secondly, I was born Baptist, bred Baptist, going to die Baptist. And they were not Baptist. But you know what? I found myself in my little truck driving to Lakewood Church. Now I know it was the Holy Ghost leading me there. I walked in the door, saw all these people praising and shouting to the Lord. They were happy to be in church. They were happy to praise the Lord. And they had their hands raised, unashamed. They didn't care what anybody thought. They were worshiping the Lord. Freaked me out. Well, after they got done praising and worship, Pastor Osteen got up. First time I ever heard him preach. And he preached a message on you are the righteousness of God. Which is exactly what I needed to hear. And my righteousness was not based on what I've done or didn't do. It was based on faith in Jesus Christ. My life was radically changed that night. I've never, never, never been the same because I got the knowledge I needed to defeat depression. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm going to give you today. Glory to God. Turn to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Chapter 10, verse 3. Might help if I went to the right Corinthians. I'm in the first Corinthians. All right. <laughs> For through, though we walk in the flesh, we do not, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And that word carnal means sense rule. Our weapons are not sense ruled. And otherwise, in other words, you being a born again believer, you should not be ruled by your senses. Senses will change. Feelings will change. I know you know that. You can be up one minute, down the next minute. And if you live your life according to how you feel, According to the circumstances, according to the situation, you will be in perpetual defeat. But our weapons, he's talking about believers here, our weapons are not sense ruled. Anytime you see flesh, Paul talking about the flesh or carnality, he's talking about being ruled by your senses, sense ruled. So you can say, for the weapons of our warfare are not sense ruled. Well, if they're not sense world, what are they? They are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds of addiction, strongholds of fear, strongholds of hatred. The word of God, our weapons are mighty to pull those strongholds down. Verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing what? Every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That means when a thought comes to your mind that is contrary to the word of God, for instance, you're a failure. 
No, you bring that into captivity to the feet of Jesus Christ. You lay it down there at the word of God. Every thought must be in obedience to God. So if God's word is contrary to that thought, you bring that thought to the word of God. You're a failure. No, I'm not a failure. I bring that thought to the word of God. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. See what I'm saying here? Oh, you're going to die of cancer. I bring that thought to the word of God, which says by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. With long life, he satisfies me. Hallelujah. You have fear. You're, the, the fear comes on you. My God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Now, the, the key here is you have to speak it. You answer that thought by speaking the word of God against it. You have to speak the word of God. But friend, that word of God spoken will destroy strongholds of the devil that he's trying to place in your life. So what am I saying here? Read the word of God so you'll know what it says about you so you will not perish for lack of knowledge. See what God says about you. Line up your words with what God says about you. Line up your thoughts with what the Word of God says about you. And you will see things begin to change because depression cannot stay where the Word of God is prevalent. Amen? Dare to believe what God says about you and not your feelings. Go through the epistles, which is from uh, Romans all the way to Revelation, and any time you see it written in him, through him, by him, or some variation in Christ, underline that. You may even want to write it down. I encourage you to write it down, whatever that scripture is, because it's talking about you. And you begin to confess, speak what that scripture says about you. Every day, I challenge you, write down those scriptures and you start off your morning speaking those scriptures over your life. Say what God says about you. Agree with God. It's as simple as that. And eventually, the devil's going to get tired of messing with you because he's seeing there's no, no room for him to get in there because you're so saturated with the word of God and you're speaking the word of God that he has no place to get in. Amen. Glory to God. Romans 4, 17. Turn there. Most of you know the scripture. That's good to see it. Romans 4, 17 says this. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, talking about Abraham, in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things, calls, he speaks it. He calls those things which do not exist as though they did. And you should be like God. The Bible says be imitators of God. So God calls those things that do not exist as though they did. So you may feel depressed, but you call yourself a sound mind. You may feel sick, but you call yourself well, according to the word of God. You may be poor, but you call yourself rich, according to the word of God. Well, how can you say that? Because the Bible says... Uh, he became poor so that we may be rich, talking about Jesus going to the cross. You see, this is where so many Christians miss it. Every facet of life is covered by the new covenant, covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Your mind, your well-being, your phys physical health, and your financial health were all addressed at Calvary's cross. So you are meant to prosper in every area of life. So you start calling those things that be not as though they were, which is the King James Version of that scripture. You call those things according to the word of God. You may not feel strong, but you call those things that be not as though they were, because that's what the Bible says. And that goes back to me telling you, find out what the word of God says about you and confess that. Amen? Uh, turn to Philippians 4. Philippians chapter 4, 
Hallelujah. Verse 8, what are you to think on? When the devil bombards your mind, God has given you a criteria of what to think on. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And the Greek word for meditate is to mutter. Speak it over and over. Roll around in your mouth. Roll around in your tongue. Whatever things are pure, true, noble, and you can find all those in the Word of God. So you begin to mutter the Word of God in your life. You find out what situation you're going through. You find it in the Word, and you begin to mutter what the Word says. That means to speak it over and over until it gets deep into your spirit, man, your spirit, woman, till you know that you know that you know, till your knower knows that what the Word of God says is true. Turn to Ephesians 6, which is to the left. Quickly, quickly. Running out of time here. Ephesians 6, starting with verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. See, you're not relying, relying on your strength. You're not relying on your power. You're relying on the Lord and the might of his power. Now, turn to Joshua 1.8 or write it down because this correlates with what we're talking about here. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Where are you, Joshua? Okay, Joshua 1.8. The book of the law, which is the word, so you can say the word shall not depart from your mouth. Again, speak the word. But you shall meditate, talking about speaking the word, muttering it over, meditate in it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you will have, you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So what are three things there? One. Have the word constantly in your mouth. Be speaking the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Meditate on the word day and night. Well, it's hard to do that if you don't read it. So you need to read the word and to begin to meditate, mutter, think on it, speak over it, roll it over in your mouth. And if you do that, if you're speaking the word constantly, meditating on the word, then your way will be prosperous and you'll have good success. Amen? Turn to Mark 16, talking about overcoming depression and all facets of it. Say, I'm an overcomer. Amen. Mark 16, Jesus giving his last instructions to the disciples before he ascends on high. And he says here, verse 17, And these signs shall follow those that believe. In my name, you have his name. Jesus Christ has given you power of attorney to use his name. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, talking about demons. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will uh, by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We have the authority of his name to do good, to defeat the devil, to enforce his defeat because he has been defeated already by Jesus at the cross. So, what are our weapons in overcoming depression? Depression. Number one, we have the Word, and I've gone over that over and over and over. You have the Word of God, and if you will speak that Word, get it into your spirit, then speak it. Here's the process. You read the Word, you believe it in your heart, and you speak it. You do that, you will see depression leave you. And when it tries to come back, you'll know what to do because you have the word in you and you're speaking the word against it. That's what Jesus did in the desert when he was tempted by the devil. He spoke the word against the devil. The same concept works for you. The same principle works for you. Number two, you have the name. 
Jesus Christ has given you power of attorney of his name to come against every onslaught of the enemy. And let me tell you something. Every name must bow to the name of Jesus. Depression is a name. It must bow to the name of Jesus. Fear must bow to the name of Jesus. Sickness must bow to the name of Jesus. Poverty must bow to the name of Jesus. Oh, if we could just get a grasp on how powerful the name of Jesus is and that we have the power of, of attorney to use it. The Lord has given you power of attorney. Number three, the blood. Write down to Revelation 12, 11. This is an important scripture. Revelation 12, verse 11 says, And they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, talking about the blood of Jesus, and by the word of their testimony. So faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, and confession, which is agreeing with the word verbally, made them overcome the devil. Well, if it made them overcome the devil, it's going to make you overcome the devil. So again, get the word into your heart and speak it, and you will have victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. Amen. Glory to God. God does not want you to press, friend. I want you to say this right now. Say, I am an overcomer through Jesus Christ. I have a sound mind. I'm strong in the Lord. I'm healthy in the Lord. I'm prosperous in the Lord. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am victorious in Jesus Christ. I am important to the body of Christ. Come on, say it with me. I'm important. I'm of value in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God. Friend, share these videos with other people. If this message blessed you, it blessed me. If it blessed you, email me at macewilkerson at aol.com. Yeah, macewilkerson at aol.com or message me on Facebook. I would love to hear from you. I want, I want to know that you're being blessed by these messages. Pastor, if you're watching this and you think I'd be a blessing to your church, I would love to come preach at your church. I have something to offer you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Friend, I love you. I believe God's best for you. And if I don't see you around town, I'll see you in heaven.